Hey guys, welcome to another Eurorack tutorial. In this video, we've got the Roland System 500 555 module, which is this guy right here. It's five modules in one. So you have portamento, sample and hold. You have two noise sources, a ring modulator and an LFO with a bunch of different waveforms. So let's quickly go over what all these functions do at a high level. Then we're gonna go over the front panel and do a bit of demoing. <laughs> So Portamento is sort of a lag processor. So what that means is that if you have a signal that rapidly changes from one value to another, like a square wave, if you apply lag to it, effectively it adds a low pass filter so it smooths out the curve. So instead of jumping straight from five volts to zero volts, for example, it'll go five, four, three, two, one, depending on the slope uh, or the amount that you apply here. And in this module, we have two different uh, lag processors uh, built into one. The next type of module you have here is sample and hold. And you may have heard sample and hold in traditional synthesizers. Usually you get that kind of R2D2 random uh, noises going on. But really what a sample and hold is, is effectively it takes one signal and then using a regularly repeating clock, it takes snapshots or it kind of freezes the value of the signal. So for example, let's say you had a signal coming in that was just ramping up constantly. And then you had a clock that was sampling that. What that means is that as it's ramping up, when the clock hits, it'll freeze the value at that level. And then the next clock hits, it'll freeze the value at the next level. So you, you turn it into a staircase effectively. But you can apply any kind of signals into here and start sampling them to get uh, different kinds of effects. So it's not a sampler in, in a traditional sense, like it's not a digital sampler where it's actually recording the values. It's just freezing a voltage at a given time at regular intervals based on some clock signal. And the traditional way to use this is to feed a noise source as the signal and then a clock source as the sampling source which effectively gives you random values because if you think of a noise, it's just random voltages. So if you're sampling the random voltages at discrete times, you're effectively turning it into a discrete set of random voltages. So it sounds like a digital sampling, but it's not. It's just a pure analog kind of freezing of values. Uh, next to that, we have noise, which is fairly self-explanatory. You have pink and white, which is just a different set of uh, frequency bands. Um, for generating noise. A ring modulator, which effectively just multiplies two signals together. So you can get that weird traditional ring mod effects, uh, like those metallic sounds, or you can get more subtle things like tremolo if you apply a very low frequency signal. And then finally, an LFO, which is probably the most self-evident. It's a low frequency oscillator. So it's just a regular oscillator, but it's used to control signals rather than produce audio. So let's start off with Portamento. Like I said, there's two uh, lag processors built in. And for each one, you have CV input and CV output to get your signal in and out. And then you have your sliders here to control for each one how fast or how much lag processing you want or how fast the signal should ramp down. And for these two sliders, you have a corresponding CV input. So you can CV control that lag processing. And this allows you to add kind of glide to sequencers or to kind of smooth out your LFOs if you wanted to. And then in the middle here, you have on off switches so you can uh, switch on and off the lag processing if you wanted to perform it live, for example, or just kind of quickly turn off uh, the glide. And then you have corresponding LEDs indicating which one is on and off. All right, so I created a little patch using a sequencer controlling my oscillator here and it sounds like this. And because we're driving this with a clock and we have a discrete step sequencer, we're getting instant value changes. So if we wanted to add some glide to kind of smooth out those or change the way the notes change over time, we'll run that through a lag processor. So one of the Portamento channels here. So what I'm gonna do is put this back in. So instead of going straight to my volt per octave control, I'm gonna run it through the Portamento control here. So now my lag time is all the way down, so we're getting the same signal as before. But as I increase the lag amount, you see you're hearing that kind of uh, gliding effect. And then we can take it to the extreme. Where the, it, the change is so slow that it's happening slower than the values are changing. So you're getting this weird morphing sound that doesn't actually get to the notes. It almost sounds like an LFO at this point. And then obviously we can use a switch to turn it off and turn it back on. I'm gonna move that back down and let's demonstrate the Portamento CV control. So I can use another signal to control how much glide is happening. So let me switch the peaks here to LFO mode. 
The other thing you can do is I can feed a sequencer channel to control the portamento amount here. And what this allows me to do is for each step that I'm playing my notes, I can pick how much portamento I want. So this gives you that kind of classic uh, TB303 where you can plug in the, the glide for individual steps in your sequencer. All right, so moving on to the sample and hold section here. Uh, if you remember, a sample and hold just takes one signal that is being sampled and then another signal that is a clock source to determine at what level or at what intervals to freeze the values. So let's go over the front panel with that in mind. So you have a built-in clock here to start off with, with a clock rate here to control how fast you're sampling your signal. But you can also feed an external clock if you wanted to. Then you have a clock output, so you can output the clock to synchronize other modules with it and you have a sample and hold output, which is the main output of the signal uh, that you want. And then you have a lag time here, which is effectively like the portamento we saw, but it's a portamento applied to the, the signal that's being output. And down here you have your signal selector. So this is what chooses the signal that is being sampled. And you have all your standard waveforms, uh, which are coming from this LFO here. And then you have your noise sources, which are coming from here or you can pick an external source uh, with the CV jack here so you can feed something else like a drum machine or another oscillator if you wanted to. So you can treat this as a little standalone, uh, fully flexible uh, sample and hold module. So let's quickly patch some stuff up and see what this sounds like. All right, so I'm gonna patch my sine wave here like I did before. I'm not gonna patch anything into the sample and hold jacks here. So we're gonna get standard uh, behavior. I'm gonna pick white noise as my, or pink noise in this case, as my source. So we're gonna get random signals coming out. So if I patch my sample and hold output into one of the uh, frequency controls here, you get that standard sample and hold kind of random sound. Now, of course, you can run this through a quantizer to get more melodic, randomly melodic notes. And then we can change the clock rate. Get more sound effects, sci-fi kind of stuff. The clock rate goes pretty low. And then we can change the lag time. So you get almost like auto-tune type sounds. And while we have that patched up, I can feed an external clock signal here just to demonstrate that. Remove the lag. And then I can control the tempo here with my te tempi. Actually, another way to really demonstrate the effect of the sample and hold is to feed it something like a ramp wave. So to demonstrate that, I'm gonna pick uh, the ramp wave directly from the LFO. So you can hear what it sounds like when it's not being sampled. You can hear the signal is just changing the frequency smoothly by ramping up. And now I've selected that same ramp wave as my source for my sample and hold. So I'm gonna pick the sample and hold now. And notice how at the given clock rate, instead of having these smooth rising pitches, the clock is gonna determine at what level we're grabbing the value of that waveform. So you're gonna get kind of discrete ramp ups. So you can get those kinds of interesting effects. And again, you can run this through a quantizer. So instead of getting kind of random voltages ramping up, uh, you're gonna get musical notes ramping up discreetly. the amount of notes that we can pick from. So now we're only grabbing the fifth and the root of the scale. So we can add the third in. So it's a good way to get kind of semi-random we could pick a sine wave to sample as well. Or different kinds of waves. So it's also an interesting way to generate melodies, especially when you have a quantizer, which you can feed any kind of CV signals into. All right, so moving down below the sample and hold, we have noise, and this is the simplest of the modules. It just has pink and white. 
So to demonstrate that, I'm going to run it through a filter, which will make it a little more interesting. So if I feed the pink noise through a low pass filter. This is how you can get these kinds of wind effects. If I switch it to white noise, you can hear that one. So it's a little more bright. The white sounds a little more like rain and pink sounds a little more like wind. And if you crank the resonance, you get even more of that wind effect. And then what you can do is feed um, a lagged out sample and hold signal that is also using noise to control the cutoff frequency. So you get kind of smooth random modulation, which gives you that like wind going through a door crack sound. And the slower the modulation and the, s the longer the lag, the more realistic the sound is. So that's basically noise in a nutshell. Uh, noise is very useful. You can use it for all kinds of sounds. Uh, you can use it, it's very useful for uh, percussion, for snares and stuff. But you can also mix it in with oscillators to add a bit of noise if you, or literally noise, yeah, but add a little bit of character and kind of warmth to a sound if you just put a little bit of noise. And then obviously for effects like wind and rain. All right, moving on from the noise, below that we have the ring modulator. Um, like I said before, ring modulator is fairly simple. It just multiplies two signals and then outputs the output. So you have XY input for multiplying and then an output. So the ring modulator typically results in inharmonic uh, frequencies. So what you can use this for is for kind of metallic and more sound effects type sounds. Or, but you can also use it for more subtle stuff. If one of the signals is uh, below the hearing range, you get more of a tremolo effect. So let's start off with a typical example of just feeding two different oscillators into it at uh, audio frequencies and see what kind of weird, strange sounds we get from that. So I can change the frequencies of my two oscillators. So now I can feed, for example, an LFO to control one of the frequencies. Or the sample and hold output. And then we can use an LFO to control of the other oscillator. Alternatively, if one of the signals is like a slow LFO, we're going to get a different kind of effect. You get more of a tremolo. All right, that covers the ring modulator. And finally, we have our last module, which is an LFO down here. So let's quickly go over those controls. So you have your standard frequency control uh, of the LFO rate, and you have CV input to control this rate as well. Then you have five different outputs. You have square, triangle, uh, ramp down, ramp up, and uh, sine wave. Then you have a frequency range switch that goes from low, medium to high which just determines the range of this. So you can go from really, really slow to kind of really fast LFOs. And then finally, we have this pair of delay trigger input and delay slider here. So if you feed a gate signal into here, depending on how much delay you add here, that's how long it'll take for the LFO to kick in. 
So you can use this for uh, for like a keyboard, for example, if you want the LFO to slowly ramp up instead of uh, being on all the time. So let's just demo some vanilla basic LFO examples. So I'm gonna feed my sine wave again. And then let's just go and see what range we have here. So I'm just gonna pick a sine wave. So this is our slowest setting. We're at the low frequency range and the slider's all the way down. So I'm gonna move the slider all the way up. And this is the fastest rate in the low setting. So we'll move it back down, go to the medium. All the way from this to, and this is the fastest rate in the medium section. And then we go to high. This is the lowest setting of the high. Crank that up. And that's effectively the maximum rate you can get. So while we have it patched in, uh, let's feed another LFO from the peaks here to control the frequency of this LFO here. you can self patch the module so for example we can patch the uh, square wave LFO through the lag processor and kind of smooth out that waveform so if we hear that we increase the lag time and then I can use the sample and hold to modulate the lag time all right, so I'm gonna leave it there for now. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of what the 555 can do. Uh, I'm gonna do more kind of musical videos uh, in the future, but for now, I just wanted to keep this video concise and focused on giving you the a sense of the range and the general functionality and the layout of this module. Uh, it's a pretty useful module to have in your toolkit, especially if you're after that traditional uh, modular, analog modular sound, uh, more from like the vintage days. So you have all your standard stuff like two lag processors, sample and hold, noise source, ring mod, uh, your basic toolkit for generating uh, different control voltages or even processing sounds to get weird sound effects and stuff. Same build quality as a 510, feels very sturdy. I really like the feeling of these sliders. Uh, time will tell how they hold up, but so far everything seems pretty solid, so no complaints so far. Uh, yeah, hopefully you like this kind of stuff. Make sure to like and subscribe, share it with your grandma, and I'll see you guys in the next one.